chance to do my bit in the recent unpleasantness. Mooching around occupied France. Too tall, they said. Wouldn't last five minutes as a spy. Never blend into a crowd. Go back to mucking out cows and driving tractors. It's bloody cheek. The floods, widespread and severe, which have made 1947 a year for the record books, finally appear to show signs of a base. Socialised medicine. Health care from cradle to grave for the great arm wouldn't stand for any of that up. The workers' cogs will appear in Thrasley, Lilliputian labour, undermining the vigour of the race with all this namby pemby dennying. You said it, my friend. Medicine's a business, same as any other business. And government has no business butting in. Hear, hear! Hepstormfuhrer Walter Kessler. How was your journey, Herr Hauptsturmfuhrer? I have no cause for complaint, Sir Reginald. East Anglia is hardly the eastern front. Hand over that formula, and you and your Nazi pals have your amnesty. Gonna take more than just atom bombs to rid the world of that ugly red rash. Russia? China? India next. The way things are looking. We're well aware of plots to assassinate members of His Majesty's government. In fact, you'll read about the latest in the papers once it's been, um, successfully carried out. How do, folks? Jinx is a name, Jolly is a game. Hey, uh, what's with the vaudeville traps, Lee? Oh, yes, Mr. Jinx. And when you've accomplished your mission, you should no longer consider this friendly territory. Ma'am, think you don't worry. It'll be the last anyone will ever hear of Jehoshaphat Jinx. I'm counting the hours. Such a vulgar little man. Jenks is their man on the inside, uses those three little songbirds as cover. Milady's definitely hatching something rancid, and if I know her, she's not necessarily singing from the same hymn sheet as Sir Reginald. The woman's capable of anything. You see, Reggie may believe he married a pea-brain debutante. But in truth, my husband seldom strays far beyond the confines of his fool's paradise. So you see, Herr Kessler, your little secret is safe. Oh, do stop fidgeting, Joyce, can't you? No picnic posing for paintings, Kay, believe me. Loretta, Loretta to Kane. And uh, how long have you been uh, working for Mr. Murchison? Couple of weeks is all. I met in the American bar at the Savoy. You see now me. I'm more of an oyster kind of goyle. But times get lean and I get hungry. And I can't afford to turn my nose up at a snail. If you know what I'm saying. Twigden, Leonora. I'm looking for Mr. Peter West. I'm afraid you've just missed him. Many's the night I've cuddled up with a Peter West. Hasn't disappointed me yet. Well, I dare say his cover art as a model account for most of his sales. Peter West is a lost cause. Peter West is a bona fide war hero. Breathtakingly audacious prison camp escape. Umpteen doom bugs shot out of the sky. Oh, I never believe a book jacket. Most of those plaudits belong to a pal of mine named the Flight Sergeant Byron Bailey. Craziest yarn I ever heard. Didn't pick up much of it. Apparently, from what those two poles in the back of the truck were saying, we're planning to do the dirty on our Russian chums. Twist their arms oh, till they turn and shut trot up. off home. Easier said than done. A certain P. Wendell Murchison. Name rings a bell. That fellow Truman kicked out of the State Department a while back for warmongering. Ah, yes. Goes around in a cowboy hat. Still like to keep up with the news, Citizens, I see. Citizens, responsibility, Peter. <laughs> Anyway, seems this Murchison had dinner last week with some top brass from the Polish government in exile. Table talk was about Nazi nerve gas that only kills communists. And pigs saw like spitfire. <laughs> My sentiments exactly, Byron, old chum. Morning, Joyce. Sleep well, I hope. Were you intending to share your scoop with us, as well as the flight sergeant? Scoop? Kay overheard you talking to Mr Bailey this morning outside the hut. Your voices woke her up. D dash it all, Peter. Uh, these days, one hears a lot of bilge talking about setting the world to rights. But don't you think it at least worth looking into, Peter? Frankly, no. Then, you're not the man I thought you were. <sighs> Joyce, wait. All right. I'll, uh, 
I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll, I'll take it to my publisher. Your publisher? A uh, big fish among the hush-hush boys during the war. What say we let Sir Reginald Thrapsley weigh up the threat to world peace? Gentlemen, all six chambers are loaded. And I came joint seventh in the Polish National Pistol Shooting Championship of 1938. I would therefore strongly advise you to remain seated. Well, Captain, so you're still refusing to explain the meaning of this? Apologies, Mr. Webb, but events have taken an unexpected turn, and certain precautions are... Well, come on, the pair of you. Don't just stand there staring. Get in. Haven't you ever seen a duck truck before? There, on the horizon. See it? Thrapsley Mound. Thrapsley Mound? The second tallest hill in Suffolk. The county not exactly famed for its undulation. Looks like Dracula's castle. Since my husband is at present indisposed, if you would care to take me into your confidence... Madame, this is all the fault of foolish rumours. Some of us have reason to believe they may be more than just rumours, Lady Muriel. Damn good reason. Well, while you assess the risk of unburdening yourselves, please accept my hospitality. I'm sure a chance to freshen up and a bite to eat. That can wait. Can't say I have much appetite for grub with all this international skullduggery unfolding as we speak. Might we talk in private, madame? No dice. No telling what kind of yarn the captain here might try and spin behind closed doors, seeing as he's in on this filthy scheme to start another war. Well, it does seem the rumour mongers have succeeded in sowing distrust in some quarters. Look here, Peter, this whole business stinks to high heaven. And I'm sure you two didn't fall for all that hogwash. This lady what's-her-name might as well have been wearing a cloak and clutching a dagger. Well, if Lady Muriel's not telling the truth, the whole truth and nothing but, then what exactly do you propose to do about it? Biggles wouldn't stand there looking stumped. Lady Muriel, hello again. Good evening, Mr West. And Flight Sergeant Bailey. I see you're admiring the portrait of my illustrious ancestor. George Plantagenet, Duke of Clarence, if I'm not mistaken. You evince an impressive knowledge of English history, Flight Sergeant. Random snippets gleaned on tedious train journeys, including a rather lengthy article about that fellow up there. Apparently, him have descendants who claim to be England's true royalty. Yes, some of us certainly do feel, uh, cheated, shall we say. Hello, Kay. How long has it been? Ah, oh, my brother, the fascist. Damn place is like a maze. Wonder where this door leads. Oh, gosh, uh, terribly sorry to disturb you and all that, but um, I seem to have lost my bearings. Wrong room, obviously. I'm afraid if you are seeking directions, I would be of little help. You were guest too, then? I am... Uh, the confidential secretary to the cultural attaché for Switzerland. Swiss, eh? Well, it so happens I've a bone to pick with you fellows. What was the idea of sitting pretty in the middle of Europe, yodelling and chomping on your chocolate bars, with that quartet of horrid horsemen whipping up merry hell all over the show? Apologies, follow miss. But I'm not at liberty to discuss diplomatic policy. You know, that nasty neighbour of yours with the Charlie Chaplin smut under his nose would have gobbled you up sooner or later. And you are? Name's Joyce. Pleased to meet you, you filthy Nazi. Sturmgewehr. The term translates as assault rifle. Midway between infantry rifle and machine pistol. Chambered for the 7.92 short. 30 round magazine. Selective fire. Apparently the Soviets have been developing something very like it. Here, Mr. Jenks, issue the rest to the men, just in case we have any more of these unexpected visitors. And they really are such lovely weapons. Quite a little arsenal, as the Archdeacon said to the chorus girl. My dear, I take it the bullet you fired at the television screen was an expression of moral outrage? We deal in lead, and I don't mean the church roof variety. Those shots will have been heard. Well, since the cat's already out of the bag. There, that should slow you down. Won't be able to come after us with punctured tyres. Say, what's going on out there? Is this Suffolk or Chicago? Where are we? You've, uh, no memory at all. Only my name, West. We are lovers, Peter. So you've forgotten even I'm... that, my sweet... I'm sorry, I... my clothes... Where are you? Clothes. Peter? Where's Peter? Peter? He's, uh, 
He didn't get away. You mean... I don't know. Then I'm going back up there. Joyce, that's suicide. Well, some of us are not prepared to leave Peter to the tender mercies of those filthy swine up there. Safe journey, fly boy. <laughs> Break away. Thank you. Bon voyage. The world's first televised assassination live from Windsor Castle. What about you? I have a job to do here. In the church? In town. My nails are sharp and my vengeance is extreme. And please bear in mind that this weapon, at a conservative estimate, boasts a cyclic rate of fire of some 500 rounds per minute. Ripping you to shreds would be child's play. Slink off back to Hades, you treacherous Harridan! <laughs> if this time last week someone had told me I'd be helping oh, an injured airman cross a muddy field in Suffolk at dawn with a loaded rifle slung over my shoulder! <laughs> 